what's going on everybody this is living in arizona now and we're going to show you the 10 best places to live in phoenix in 2024 first up here we are in chandler as with all of these places these are suburbs of phoenix metro so chandler is one of the premier destinations to live here and many would say the best city suburb in all of arizona because of the quality of life that you have here the access to quality tech jobs such as Intel, GoDaddy, and several more. Now the population here in Chandler is a population of around 290,000 people, almost 300,000 people here in Chandler. By the way, the entire Phoenix Metro population is around 4.9 million residents, pushing it towards the 5 million mark, making it the 11th largest metropolitan area in the nation by population. Phoenix grew significantly from 2010 to 2020, and that's been the trend across the Phoenix metro area. Now, if you wanted to live here in Chandler, the average median home price is around $450,000 to $500,000 for a single family home. If you wanted to get a two bedroom condo, you'd be looking to pay anywhere between $350,000 to $400,000 here in 2024. Chandler is considered one of the safest places in the Phoenix Metro to live in terms of large cities. And it's also named top 100 best places to live in the United States. If you're looking for neighborhoods to consider, the Ocotillo Master Plan community is along a waterfront with lush green spaces, which is rare for the desert, right? You also have Fulton Ranch, downtown Chandler is very popular. And then they have some retirement communities in the south like Sun Lakes. As with many areas around the Phoenix metro area, the population keeps going up. I know that the locals are not the happiest to hear that, but it is what it is. Phoenix has always continued to grow this way. And people are concerned about the water levels in Phoenix metro being able to support such a large population. And according to the water management officials of Arizona, there's enough uh, water reserves in Phoenix to last around 100 years. At least that's what they have told us. Next up, we're headed to Scottsdale. Now, Scottsdale is one of the ritziest areas in all of Arizona and certainly here in Phoenix Metro. The only one that's going to rank above Scottsdale is going to be its neighbor, Paradise Valley. Now, Paradise Valley is not going to be on this list but that is definitely one of the ritzier areas in Arizona, along with Carefree, which isn't gonna be on this list as well, but Scottsdale borders with both of those basically to the north is Carefree, to the west is gonna be Paradise Valley. Average median home price here for a single family home, you're looking at well over $600,000, $700,000, sometimes even more into the millions. Some of the best areas to live, I would say, are going to be in the north, Scottsdale area, where you have Troon, Troon North, you have Greyhawk. But if you wanted to live more centralized in Scottsdale, you would look at places like Old Town Scottsdale or the uh, Riverfront area, where you're really centrally located right around Fashion Square Mall. Another area that you may consider is McCormick Ranch, especially if you're into golfing. And then there's a nice area called Kierlin, Kierlin Commons, that's around the Scottsdale Air Park. If you go south a bit, you're gonna have uh, the river, which is Rio Salado, which borders with Tempe. Scottsdale, again, is considered a safe city, so don't have much to worry about here. Also, they don't have access to public transportation other than buses here. Most of the suburbs in Phoenix are gonna be heavily dependent upon the freeway system. In this area, you're gonna have the Loop 101, which goes along the eastern edge, which borders with the Native American Reservation. You have Fort McDowell over here, and then you have Talking Stick Casino, and that's a nice area to hang out around. Population of Scottsdale is 240,000 people. Next up, here we are in Tempe with a population of around 180,000 people. This is considered one of the best areas in Phoenix just because of its centrality to the area. So it's really centrally located just south of Scottsdale, north of Chandler, and then west of uh, other suburbs like Mesa. 
So if you're gonna live here, the average median home price is going to be around 400 to 450,000 on the low end, but they do have some higher end housing. If you wanted a nice cosmopolitan feeling area, you would go to the Rio Salado area just around the Arizona State University where you'll find some high rise condos. And that area is really getting developed and it's up and coming. It's like a second downtown area for Phoenix Metro. Downtown Phoenix being Central Avenue, but the area around Rio Salado definitely becoming a second downtown. And that's gonna be along Mill Avenue, which is popular for nightlife, being that it's right there next to the university. Tempe used to be home to the Arizona Cardinals before they moved to Glendale. So Tempe's kind of changed its experience over the years. All you're really gonna get is the Chicago Cubs right there along the waterfront. So you don't really have much access to any sports. If you wanted that, you'd have to go to downtown Phoenix. But Tempe always is on the radar for moving one of Phoenix's major sports teams to uh, the region. Now Tempe definitely has probably some of the most uh, public transport options aside from downtown Phoenix. So you're gonna have the light rail, you're gonna have plenty of buses, and it's really easy to get around. You could live in Tempe without a car, I would say, especially if you're around Mill Avenue. All right, here we are now in Gilbert with a population of around 283,000 people. It's a bit more expensive than Chandler, I would say, just because it's become one of the premier destinations for people coming from the LDS church community. It's a really popular place. It's actually taken on the name of being called Little Provo. And the reason they call it that is just because it's got a strong sense of community for people who are LDS. So if you're someone who's close to that faith, Gilbert seems to be where a lot of people gravitate towards. That's mostly going to be the case in Southeast Phoenix. They have a big temple here, a beautiful one. And then so uh, the safety in Gilbert is considered probably the safest in the Phoenix metro area. Um, my brother lives there, he's a real estate agent. So that tells you everything you need to know about Gilbert being a safe place with high standards. Any one of these could be someone's favorite place in Phoenix. I mean, it could be Chandler, it could be Scottsdale, it could be Tempe, it could be Gilbert. It just really depends on what you really like because any one of these four, depending on who you ask, would be someone's favorite. If you're looking for nightlife, you go to Tempe. If you're looking for safe uh, communities to raise a family, you go to Gilbert or Chandler. If you're looking for high-end luxury living, you would go to a place like Scottsdale. So that gives you an idea of what you have going on here. But here in Gilbert, they do have a downtown area right along Gilbert Avenue. They call it DTG, which is downtown Gilbert. You'll know of it because it has the tall water tank. Uh, it's still there from the old days. I just want to let you know that we've done several different driving tours around each one of these suburbs. If you ever wanted to watch any more of our videos more in detail about any of these places, go onto our homepage and you'll see we have all sorts of playlists that you can go through everything from driving tours around cities in Arizona or even in Phoenix, all the way to off-roading and adventure stuff, getting outside in nature. So go to our homepage and you can binge watch any day all of those videos. We've got a variety of different styles that we've done it for formats, so do check our homepage. Next up, here we are in downtown Phoenix, or well, Phoenix in general. I would say Phoenix is kind of segregated in several different areas. In the north, you have Desert Ridge, that's known as North Phoenix, around Mayo Boulevard. So if you followed Tatum Boulevard up, that's where you would be is at the Desert Ridge Mayo area. If you go south of there, you have like Central Phoenix or Middle of Phoenix, some call it Uptown or Midtown. That's gonna be around the place where Pietzwa Peak is or maybe the Biltmore, and that's a really popular place. But if you go a little bit further south, you're gonna have Downtown Phoenix. And then if you go a bit east, but kind of towards Midtown, you have Arcadia, which is probably one of the most sought after areas in all. Phoenix sitting at the base of Camelback Mountain. But yeah, downtown Phoenix is really undergoing a makeover. It's been a slow journey to get downtown Phoenix back up to where it is for downtown standards around the country, but it is emerging. A lot of people who have lived down there say they really enjoyed it. Obviously the Phoenix Suns are playing down there, the Arizona Diamondbacks play down there. And sometimes 
Uh, there's a conversation about bringing the Coyotes back to downtown, although that doesn't look like it's going to happen. And as you know, the Cardinals are in West Phoenix and Glendale. But the lifestyle down here is very cosmopolitan. One of the popular areas to live in downtown is going to be called Roosevelt Row. So if you're looking for an area where they're going to have more nightlife and kind of like a hipster vibe, Roosevelt Row just off of Central, kind of intersects with Central, uh, just north of the downtown core is where most people like to go. You can actually find some reasonably affordable uh, living in Phoenix, uh, in particular even in downtown, just depending on uh, what side of Central you're going to go to. It's going to get more affordable if you go to the west side. You can easily get rent down here for anywhere as low as fifteen to sixteen hundred on up to twenty four hundred. And if you wanted to buy one of these condos, you'd probably be looking at around three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand to live in downtown in a condo. Next up, we have Queen Creek. Now, this is going to be back in southeast Phoenix, another area that's emerging. I've always said that Queen Creek is going to be the next Chandler or Gilbert. It's not quite there yet, but I think it's going to be better than Chandler and Gilbert because it's learning from everything that developed the Chandler or Gilbert downtown cores. And it's going to do it better because they have an opportunity to learn from all that through, you know, research and development. But as of right now, Queen Creek is mostly new homes, uh, mostly new subdivisions and communities. Also, uh, they have the marketplace. And Queen Creek right now, I would say, is a bit far away from everything. There's no real freeway that comes down there just yet, although they're building one. So it's going to take some time. But once that happens, Queen Creek's really going to be on map. It's a beautiful side of town because Southeast Phoenix has great views of the Superstition Mountains from here. Queen Creek used to be a farming community just like Gilbert and Chandler did. I mean, if you look at pictures from 40, 50 years ago of Gilbert or Queen Creek, it was known as a farming community. For those of you who know the 49ers quarterback who played in the Super Bowl, he actually comes from Queen Creek, Brock Purdy. So that's some interesting information. Uh, but either way, you got this area out here in Southeast Phoenix that is definitely something to add to the radar. I would say if you're looking to build and you have a family, consider Queen Creek. If you're a single person, I'm not going to recommend Queen Creek to you. It's more for families. Think of Queen Creek as a newer, shinier Gilbert, but further away from everything in Phoenix. Now here we are in Peoria. Now this is gonna be Northwest Phoenix. This is our first time looking at a west side community. Now I would say that I pick the Northwest side of Phoenix as my favorite just because it's close to Lake Pleasant. It's also close to Northern Arizona. You can easily get up there uh, accessing the 303 connecting to the I-17, which makes it easy to get around. Also they have Arrowhead Lakes up here. But I would say the way that Peoria is growing up into the northwestern part of Arizona beyond the White Tank Mountains. Very interesting area to uh, consider. It might not be for everybody. It is still quite far away from downtown Phoenix, uh, but because it has the 303 that connects to the I-17 and the 101 is easily accessible from I-17, you can easily get around. There's not going to be much public transportation out here other than a bus. And if you wanted to live here, you may find a little bit more savings on the northwest side of Phoenix than you would find, say, in the southeast side of Phoenix. So it tends to be a little bit more cost affordable out here. The population of Peoria is around 190,000, pushing 200,000 people. And I would say it's going to start growing a bit faster because of some of the development they have going on on this side. As with anywhere in Phoenix Metro, you're going to see some areas that are already established with low construction and development going on. And then you're going to see areas like Peoria or Queen Creek, where it seems like everywhere you turn, there's some sort of construction or subdivision being built. I would say you could probably get a home single family in Peoria for around $420,000. It just varies because the market does go up and down. Right now, the market is lower than it was last year. I would say if you're looking to save money in general, you would probably want to look at the west side of Phoenix. Some of the places that are not going to be on this list that you may consider taking a look at are going to be places like El Mirage, Surprise. A lot of people who live out in Surprise really like it. If you're 
looking to do some retirement, you maybe consider areas around Sun City, Sun City Grand, and all of those are very close to Peoria. It seems like if people in Sun City or in Surprise want to do some mall shopping, they usually end up going towards Arrowhead out in Peoria, well, technically North Glendale, or they end up going out towards the stadium area. But that gives you an idea of how the west side is set up. If you go towards the southwest, you have Buckeye and then you have Verado, which is a new community. But the west side is definitely more affordable than the east side. So guys, if you're new here to living in Arizona now, this channel, and you guys want videos like this, and you like to keep up with things going on in Arizona, you can consider subscribing and liking the video, supporting us as channel members, which helps us get out there and film more content for you and bring you more Arizona entertainment. So let us know what you guys wanna see from us as we continue to show you around the best places in Phoenix. Now here we are in Cave Creek. This is actually where I grew up and went to high school. So Cave Creek is definitely uh, one of those places that has my attention. A lot of people who go up to Cave Creek, they fall in love with it. It is a small town atmosphere. You're not gonna find Walmarts or Home Depots anywhere in Cave Creek, although they are building them. The corporation stuff down around Carefree Highway which also connects to New River and borders with North Phoenix. Just depends on how the area is um, set up by the cities. I would say it's more or less South Cave Creek, but if you go up into Cave Creek, the area that I'm talking about, that's gonna be north of Black Mountain along Cave Creek Road. And if you go out north towards Spur Cross, you're gonna find lots of hiking. It's more of that desert living. It's quite expensive actually, Probably if you wanted to buy a single family home, you'd be looking at $800,000. Uh, so you could see it's double the price of what you would find in downtown, uh, but it's well deserving. And people who live out here, they really love it because you still can see the stars at night. And you'll hear the coyotes howling, but it's still considered Metro Phoenix. I mean, you're about, I would say 35 to 40 minutes away from downtown especially with the way the freeway systems are, although you would have to take Cave Creek Road, which takes about 15 minutes to get to the 101, connect to the State Route 51, and then you're in there. Um, but that's what people like. They like to be outside of the hustle and bustle of the city while still having access to it at the same time. Probably the best you can find is gonna be living up against Black Mountain. You have Frontier Town nearby, the El Encanto Mexican restaurant, you have Harold's Bar and Grill, you have Buffalo Chip Saloon, you have the Hideaway Biker Bar. So Cave Creek, definitely an interesting place to consider. Um, Black Mountain to me looks like a volcano and it's cool to kind of live around a desert volcano like this. It does border with Carefree, which I said is probably the most expensive uh, real estate you're going to find and that's in far north Scottsdale area. If you go up into Desert Mountain, you'll see why. Now here we have Fountain Hills, which is a little bit further east of Scottsdale. You actually have to drive through the McDowell Mountains to get out here. Now Fountain Hills and Cave Creek are smaller towns, by the way. Cave Creek's population is around 10 to 15,000. Fountain Hills is going to be about the same. Uh, I would say Fountain Hills is a bit more affordable than Cave Creek. And a lot of people like living out here in Fountain Hills. It's close to the Verde River, which gives that a little more cooler temperatures, higher elevations, and a little bit more humidity. I would say that monsoons are more likely to come to the Fountain Hills area. For those of you who don't know what the Arizona monsoon season is, it's in the summertime when we've had 110 degree heat. All of a sudden in the afternoon, here comes some rain and thunder and lightning and it cools down the whole area and it brings some much needed summer showers. And most of Phoenix used to get it back in the day, but because of the concrete jungle, the radiation that comes from the asphalt and the pavement, it kind of blocks out that uh, monsoon that used to come into the Phoenix area around the 90s that we just don't see as often anymore. But Fountain Hills being on the outside, Cave Creek being on the outside, they still do see some strong monsoon uh, weather. And the reason it's called Fountain Hills is because of the very large fountain. It used to be one of the tallest in the world. I think it still is. So definitely consider looking at Fountain Hills if you're looking for some very nice living and lifestyle, relaxing, kind of far away from downtown, closer to Scottsdale, just out on Shea Boulevard, you can easily get there. Now let's talk about the Glendale area where the Arizona Cardinals play at State Farm Stadium. They're also gonna do the Fiesta Bowl out here. Major events take place here when the Cardinals are not playing. Sometimes they do concerts, sometimes they do monster truck rallies, 
So you never know what's going on inside that stadium, but around the stadium is an area called Westgate. I would say that's probably the best area of Glendale. And when it comes to the west side, this area seems to get the most attention, even more so than Peoria. And that Arrowhead area that I was telling you about seems to be in Glendale, although it feels like it's Peoria. The thing about living out here in Glendale, it's not considered the safest place uh, in the Phoenix metro area, but it's considered a good area for affordable homes. I think right now you could probably find a house that's a single family home for under 300,000 here in Glendale. Uh, for me, driving around Glendale is a bit difficult, not necessarily around the Westgate area, but once you're on Grand Avenue, cruising the avenues, uh, just going, you know, on that road that's kind of horizontal or it's not straight, basically. It would connect all the way up to Wickenburg anyway. Um, I would say Glendale is a nice place to live if you're looking to save money, but if you've got the money, you might consider going out to the southeast side or maybe out towards uh Goodyear or Buckeye Verado. One other area you can consider is going to be in the southeast side of Phoenix. It's Mesa. That's actually where I have a condo if you guys wanted to live out there. Uh, also fairly affordable for southeast Phoenix. But watch some more of our other videos. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you on the next one.